are in Iceland. We just got here to camp and it's beautiful. The landscape, the birds, the mountains, the moss. It's just green and beautiful and we're hoping to catch brown trout. So we got together, we decided we wanted to go catch a brown trout somewhere where they're native and we chose Iceland and we're ready to catch some of the largest uh, brown trout in the world. They're the tough ones to catch. They're kind of hidden and it doesn't matter if you're on the trip of a lifetime or in your own backyard. There's something special about these trout. We really enjoy seeing the predator side of fish, you know, that predatory response. Watching fish come out of maybe some structure and ambush a streamer is just really awesome. It's really fun. It doesn't matter really if you're fishing a small brushy stream in Utah, maybe a bigger well-known river like the Madison or the Beaverhead in Montana, the Great Lakes or here in Iceland. Brown trout are something that everyone can relate to and it's something that we can find a common talking point on with almost anyone in the fly fishing community. There's water all over the place. Lots of rivers, lots of streams that lead into these gargantuan sized lakes that hold enormous brown trout and that's what we're here for. <laughs> So we're going to be fishing in uh, rivers and lakes around Iceland. We're going to be driving around the island. We're going to visit uh, Lake Thingvallavar and we're going to visit uh, Big Laxá, Tungna River, uh, Kaltakvist River and uh, some other places as well. And uh, our, our target is uh, brown trout and arctic char. So we were with our guides, uh, Gunnar and Christian, a uh, fish partner, um, are some of the best guys for brown trout in all of Iceland. It seems like everybody that I know has somebody that they know, who they have somebody that they know, who they know, someone that has someone that they know that wants to go to Iceland. And it's been on our bucket list forever to get here, and we finally made it. We're here. And we're so happy. You know, it's kind of tough fishing in Iceland because our arms just got so worn out from catching giant fish all day. <laughs> <laughs> we had some super delicious Icelandic food. We had rotten fermented uh, Greenland shark. <laughs> <laughs> We eat very, very delicious food in Iceland. Liver of something, horse, sheep faces. Mm, delicious. Sheep face jam. Sheep face jam. Bad Schwitzler. <laughs> Lots of super delicious cuisine. <laughs> he looks straight at me and he's just like, ah! Okay, in Iceland, we have hidden people. Uh, the elves, they live in stones. So if you're throwing rocks and you could actually be throwing part of their house. And so that's part of the reason why Christian was freaking out because they really do believe that if you're throwing part of the hidden people's homes that they could curse you and that things could go bad. Very few people in Iceland can actually see them, but they do exist and we all believe in them. 
uh, we have to behave very well around them and uh, because if we don't if we make them angry they they will put curse on us here we are about two o'clock in the morning stuck on a rock high centered in the middle of a river right above a waterfall and we couldn't get off we were hours away from anything and it was super tough after a long battle with the rock we finally won and continued home to camp we were however beginning to wonder if we had been cursed the next morning we needed some additional luck with a big day ahead we made an offering to the hidden people on our way to the previously inaccessible, unfished, and treacherous canyon reaches of the river that we dubbed the Hidden. Someone forgot the life jackets, and as a result, we almost didn't do the float in the first place. And it's just crazy in hindsight because it was the most unbelievable experience to float that unfished river in that unbelievable landscape. So our guide Christian told us that there was a possibility of catching some arctic char. We get distracted fairly easily, so we had to go catch a couple char for ourselves. Most anglers come to Iceland to fish the lake, and we were no exception. We were excited at the chance and opportunity to catch one of these Ice Age trout. Just amazingly big browns, and we were stoked. We're here fishing Thingarvaklinton, <laughs> and... <laughs> Lake Thingarvaklinton, Lake Thingarvaklinton, Lake Thingarvaklinton. <laughs> Seriously, like, how do you say it? So here we are on what most people know as Lake Thingvillar, chasing what the locals here call Ice Age Trout. Ice Age Trout are our native wild brown trout that were likely historically sea run, but again now they're landlocked in this huge lake. 
char are their primary food source and hopefully we can use some char patterns and catch some monster browns. <laughs>